Victor have to ask for the next slide, I believe. Um, so, okay. yes, but you can start now. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So, yeah, so this is Vakas Emma, then I'm PhD student at Friedrich Schiller University, Jena, and um, from Germany. And I will be talking about how reproducible are the results gained with the help of deep learning method in biodiversity research. So next slide, please. So, yeah, so we'll dive into the introduction first. So uh, in general, the reproducibility is the ability of a researcher to duplicate the results of previous study with the same material used by the original researcher. But when it comes to the deep learning, we could find various definition according to the data or the code used during the reproducibility study. And the word this reproducibility could interchangeably be used with repeatability and replicability as well. So here I refer reproducibility as the ability to duplicate the result using the same data and the same code and analysis. Why it is important? It is important because of the proof of correctness. So for example, if two or more than two person or authors are able to get the same result, then it kind of provides some proof of correctness. And it also avoid reinventing the wheel instead of getting into the work that has been done in the past, one could uh, focus on the future prospect. And it also provides the baseline for comparison. If you have come across some results, then you could also verify if your uh, result has better performance than the past work or not. And in the end, as we all know that this deep learning has various application in biodiversity domain, whether it could be a biodiversity monitoring, species classification and identification and so on. And therefore it is important that every experiment that has been done with the deep learning method should be reproducible. Next slide, please. So what are the factors that we are actually looking for reproducibly in deep learning? So it could be categorized into four categories. So we have first one, lack of resources. So we usually find if you don't find the access to the data set or the source code, it is really hard to reproduce some of the results. And even though if we have the resources available, we go to the next step, that is the lack of information, where we find like we need required information to complete our experiments. And that could be related to the software and hardware, hyperparameters, clarity in method, understanding of the claim. And then the third factor could be lack of statistical consideration. So we have often seen like author tend to provide only the best selective result and they don't provide how many trials they have gone through. So if we try to reproduce their result, then we don't find the same result as they have produced. And the fourth one is lack of controlled randomness. So we know like this deep learning algorithm involves some sort of randomness. This is how deep learning works. And uh, But in the end, we have a run-to-run -run variability and that also poses some problem. So this randomness comes from the weight initialization, stochastic layer, data shuffling, and so on. Next slide, please. So yeah, to identify a number of uh, uh, how we can verify which paper is reproducible or not, and to get into the papers from the biodiversity domain, we use some key search words, keywords, and these keywords has come from the biodiversity expert. And by using these keywords from the Google Scholar, we were able to get number of articles. So we first selected 100 articles, and that were from 2015 to 2021. Next slide, please. And uh, there comes this screening stage. Once we have 100 papers, then we, we remove 39 papers out of it because those were empirical studies or maybe only the abstract base and some duplication and some papers were not accessible. So out of 100, we are left with only 61 papers, as you can see on the bar chart. There's a different distribution from 2015 to 2021, and where most of the papers are taken from 2020 and 2021. And on your pie chart, you could also see that this uh, publishers, different distributions are taken into account. So it's quite like uh, diverse. Next slide, please. So here comes the reproducibility variable stage where we try to verify, uh, we try to dig into the paper of whatever we have selected in previous steps and try to verify whether it is reproducible or not. 
So for that, we have taken 12 reproducibility variables into account that has come from the various uh, factors that has already been talked about, whether it is a source uh, information, methodological, statistical randomness, and so on. And these uh, variables has come from mainly from the uh, previous research or mainly from the checklist, reproducibility checklist provided by various renowned uh, conferences where whether it is new rapes, whether it is triple AI. So they have provided the base criteria for how they consider the paper reproducible. So next slide, please. So once we have this sort of variables and we decided with the exact definition for what we are looking for in the paper, then we went and one paper one by one manually and try to uh, record the binary responses by saying the binary responses it is usually the whether that particular variable is available in the paper or not for example as you can see in your screen we look for the data set source code or the model architecture is available or is it open source or not and then we look for the various variable one by one and just recorded our responses so next slide please so in the end we come up with some analysis once we have done uh, uh, covered up all the 61 papers from the biodiversity domain we have seen like uh, if you could go with category by category so first category was the resource information where we found like most of the problem lie with the data sets and source code because they are not open source and we find the, the authors don't often provide the data set or the source code with, with the articles and that's where we find like there's a basic problem with the reproducibility. And when it comes to the methodological information, we find like there are two variables that needs to be considered. One is the software and hardware specifications. So often we don't find any software and hardware specification in the paper or in the code that if it is available. So it is like 47 papers out of like 61 papers. We don't find this sort of information. And this is also important, one of the important variable too. And then hyperparameters, as we know, all know, like for training, deep learning, this is like one of the important aspect. And 21 papers out of like uh, 61 papers hasn't provided any information or the just partial information about this. And when we come to the randomness information, it is seen like only the three papers considered uh, the randomness to be like important factor for reproducibility. So next slide, please. So for the statistical information, we have uh, uh, the variable that is really important for us is the averaging result. So most of the paper we find they have produced only one value that is the best value. No matter how many trials they have done, there's no averages, nothing. So to find that particular, the highest value in deep learning algorithm is really difficult. And sometimes it's not possible. So this is like the important aspect, like 40 papers out of like 61 does not provide the averages or something, some, some a range of the results. And then we have a pie chart where it shows like number of different categories where we see like uh, only 10 papers out of 61 for the resource information provided all the information for that particular category and then it is so on for the statistical information randomness information for the randomness as we say like only three out of 61 were there so the next slide please so yeah, so overall the conclusion we could find like according to the result, only 16% of the studies fulfill the basic criteria of reproducibility. That means like at least uh, the what the big conferences mention as the reproducibility only 16% of the papers comes true and more than 50% of the papers provide neither the source code nor the data set. So this is really alarming situation for the reproducibility. And only three papers out of 61 took randomness into account. And for future, we'll try to automate this process of extracting the reproduced pre variables that we have done manually. And it's so exhausting. So maybe in future, we'll try to automate this process and it would be much more faster than we did as manually. Next slide, please. Next. Next slide, please. So thank you so much. So if you have any question, you can reach 
us with this QR code and our abstract is present on that particular QR code. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for us. That was uh, that was great. Thank you. I really like the idea of using AI to help regulate AI and try to make it more reproducible as well. That's really cool. Um, does anyone Thank have any questions? I see there's none online. Anyone in the room? Thanks for sharing this. I think it's really really cool work. Um, did you see any uh, temporal? Uh, difference between how open or how reproducible your results were? I know 61 is kind of a smallish number, but did you see that more recent papers were more open or was there any sort of temporal trend? Uh, yeah, the recent due to like, as I have already mentioned, there are like some big conferences that have now uh, implemented this sort of uh, checklist before submitting the paper. So now, the trend is now people are getting more open. They are providing the more source codes, more uh, uh, data sets. So that's quite. And also like there are like number of uh, challenges going on. There, there was one uh, machine learning uh, uh, challenge in 2021 and it's every year. And where I have also participated, it was like to reproduce the paper that has already been published in the renowned conferences. So yeah, now the efforts are being made towards this. And yeah, we could see like now the trend is like we would like to have more and more reproducibility. Any other questions? Um, okay, I think then we move on to the next next speaker who is Ben Scott.